Hiya, I'm Randy Williams and I'm back again in this second part of the Wooden Dummy videos to show you some more of the two-man drills that you can practice using the Wooden Dummy as a partner. Now a lot of times, as I said before, you might think that when you're alone, you can't practice a lot of the techniques of Wing Chun or a lot of the drills. You may think, well, I can't do my sticky hands, I can't do my lops or my sticky foot. But actually, if you're a little bit creative and you understand the language of the dummy or the way that movements translate over from the wooden dummy to actual practice, you can do a whole lot more with the wooden dummy than you thought. You can actually practice your lop sow techniques, your sticky hands, your rolling hands. You can practice sticky foot. And I'm going to show you exactly how you can do that. Now, you have to be a little bit free in your interpretation of the movements, but you can actually use your dummy for a lot more than you may have realized. So hopefully, uh, I can share something with you here and show you how you can practice all of your fighting techniques and a lot more with your wooden dummy than you actually thought you could. All right, next we're gonna work on the complex attacks with Sam Gautma or triangle footwork. So what I'll do is step up to the dummy with my right foot and I'm gonna trace a triangle pattern with my feet as I do the complex attacks. The first one I do will be Tan Da. So what I'll do is step back, step forward, Tan and punch with my arms both hitting the dummy's arms. Then I'll slide back, step forward, Tanda on the other side. Circle the hands, Tanda. All right, the next combination I'll work will be the Gangda, or a low sweep block and punch. So I'll do my triangle step and come in, Gang Sao, and punch. Then I'll circle the hands and do the other side. So, triangle step gang da, and again. All right, next I'm going to hyun da chang dai jian. So what I'll do is do my triangle step footwork, hyun, and hit the dummy on the low line with my fingers pointing 45 degrees downward. Then I'll circle that hand out as I do triangle step to the other side. So it looks like this. All right, the next variation will be Wu Da Chang Jian. So what I'll do is, using the triangle step footwork, change sides, Wu Sao and hit the dummy. And I'll circle round, Wu and hit. So it goes. My next variation will be Lan Da Chao Kin. So what I'll do is triangle step into a grab and uppercut, not making contact with the dummy's body. Then triangle step around, grab and uppercut. All right, next I'm going into the slow attack combinations, which I showed in my last series of tapes. So what I'll do is step up to the dummy with my right leg forward. Triangle step footwork, tan da. Then I'll reach across and re-trap the hand that the tan hand is now trapping. And then again, re-grab that same arm with the chop. And I go to the other side and I go tan, pak, lop. Switch, tan, pak, lop. Switch, tan, pak, lop. Switch, tan, pak, lop. All right, I can do that same slow attack combination with the kick. So what I'll do is step back, con punch kick, land with the pak chang, grab chop. Switch sides, con punch kick, land with the pak, grab chop. Again slowly, con punch kick, land with the pak, grab chop. Switch sides, con punch kick, land with the pak, grab chop. So it goes. All right, now to practice the slow attacks, what'll happen is when John 
gives me the triangle step punch, what I'll do is tan, pak, chop. And again, tan, pak, chop. So it goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, and four. Now to add the kick, I'll come back and go tan, hit, kick, hit, hit, and again, hit, hit, hit. So it goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, and four. All right, next, the Pak Da slow attack. So I'll use the same triangle step footwork, and I'll circle around, Pak punch, and I'm actually going to make contact with the outside of my arm against the dummy's arm. Then from here, I'll grab chop, re-trap chan. Switch sides, and I'm going to go Pak punch, grab chop, re-trap. Switch, Pak, grab, re-trap. Switch, Pak, grab, re-trap. All right, now to add the kick to the Pak Da, and always remembering that the last one to hit is the first one to block, what I'll do is step back, Pak punch kick, land with the chop, knee trap chun. Step back, Pak punch kick, land with the chop, knee trap Pak. Again, slowly, Pak punch kick, land with the chop, grab hit. Step off, Pak punch kick, land with the chop, knee trap and hit. So it goes. All right, the second slow attack, what, what we'll do is the poxo. So as he comes in, what I'll do is back up, pock, chop, retrap. Back again, pock da, chop, retrap. So it goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, four. To insert the kick, I'll back up and go pock, hit, kick, grab, chop, retrap, and again, pock, hit, kick, grab, chop, retrap. So it goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, four. Okay. <laughs> All right, this next combination is the Bong Sao slow attack. Now the difference in the footwork is we're still doing a triangle footwork, but we're doing an inverted triangle. So instead of the point being away from me, the point of the triangle is towards me when I step. In other words, from starting position, I'm going to step back and step to the outside with my Bong Sao. Now simulating the grab, normally you would grab right here where your hand is doing the bong. But because of the inflexibility of the dummy, in actual fact, it's more realistic to grab this far arm. So I'm going to grab that and chop. Then I'm going to retrap the hand that I'm grabbing as I do the Chang Jian. Then again, I'm going to step back and sort of to the outside with the next bong. Grab, chop, retrap. Again, step back, step out, grab, chop, retrap. Step in, step to the outside, grab, chop, retrap. So the drill goes. All right, to add a kick to this, all I'll do is put a side kick in during the bong so. So I'll step back, bong side, grab, chop, retrap. Step back. Long side, grab, chop, retrap. Step back, long side, grab, chop, retrap. Step back, long side, grab, chop, retrap. All right, now for the bong cell slow attack. When Joe gives the triangle step punch, I'll triangle to the outside bong. Lot fun, retrap. And again, step back, triangle to the outside, grab chop, retrap. So the drill goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, and four. Now to add the kick when he comes in, I'll go bong side kick, grab chop, retrap, bong side kick, grab chop, retrap. So the drill goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three. One, two, and four. 
All right, my final slow attack combination is Wu Da Chang Jian. So what I'm going to do is triangle step, Wu Da Chang. Then I'm going to retract the non-striking hand to the side as I do Jing Jian. And then Lan Da Chao Kin to the body. Again, not striking the dummy's body. Then I'll triangle step to the other side, Wu Da Chang, retract with the Jing Jian, Lan Da Chao Kin. Again, it'll be Wu Da, Jing Jian, Lan Da. Wu Da, Jing Jian, Lan Da. All right, we can add a kick to that by coming in with the Wu Da, Jing Jian, and then kick with that last syllable. Switch sides, Wu Da, Jing Jian, Lan Da with a kick. Switch sides, Wu Da, Jing Jian, Lan Da with a kick. Switch sides, Wu Da, Jing Jian, Lan Da with a kick. Alright, for the Wu Da slow attack, what's going to happen here is he'll do the triangle step with the chop. I'll go Wu Da Chang Jing. Jing Jing, and then Lan Da Chao Kin. Then he comes to the other side and I go Wu Jing Lan Da Chao Kin. So it goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, and four. Now to add the kick, what I'll do is come in one, two, one and then one, two, two. So it goes one, two, one, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, four. All right, next I'm gonna show uh, an application of the dummy that's probably not normally done classically, but there's no reason why you can't do it. And that is practicing the lops out changes on the wooden dummy. Now the first thing you have to understand in this is that because the dummy's arm is inflexible, you can't do lop sow as you would normally do with a partner. In other words, normally I'd be grabbing the arm that I'm touching here. But normally that arm would also be pushed out to a little bit different position because of the impact of my arm. Well, the dummy won't let me push it that far. So what I do to simulate that hand position is to grab the other arm, which is exactly in about the spot that I would be pushing his arm to if I could flex it. So the lop cycle is going to look like this. Basically the same, grab, punch, bong. Grab, punch, protect, bong. Grab, punch, wu, bong. So now, what I can do is practice all those same lop changes that I normally do with a partner, but do it with the wooden dummy. Now what I'm gonna do is show you how to do the fan sao switch first, which is just a simple pull across. Now there's two jobs in the fan sao switch. There's either the switcher or the reactor. So what happens when you're the switcher, for example, you switch when you're the puncher. So if I'm the puncher on the switch, what I'll do is just fan da to the other side. Then I'm back into the cycle over here. Now if I'm the puncher on the switch, again, I just do a fan sao over to the other side. Now if you were the guy reacting, what would you do? Well, you'd be the guy in bong, and you'd be reacting by whipping over to the other side and doing bong against his fan sao. Then you'd be cycling again. And once again, if you were it, if you were bong sao on the switch, you'd have to flip over to the other bong. So if we were gonna do this drill with a descending count, what I can do is let the dummy be the switcher or the switchee. So what's gonna happen here with the descending count, it's gonna look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm the puncher, so I'm the switcher. Switch. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I'm the bong, so I'm getting switched on. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Switch. Six, two, three, four, five, six. Switch. Five, two, three, four, five. Switch. Four, two, three, four. Switch. Three, two, three. Switch. Two, two. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch.
All right, now if I were gonna add a kick to the fun switch with the descending count, what I would do is kick with every time that I punch. So if I'm the switcher, I would just pull, punch, kick, and then land, bong, and cycle again. And again, if I were the switcher, I would pull, punch, kick, and then land, bong, and then cycle again. Again, I would pull, punch, kick, land, bong, and then cycle again. Pull, punch, kick, land, bong, and then cycle again. Now I could also do the kick with the bong cell. If I were defending against a guy pull, punch, kicking, I could stop kick. So what would happen is I would react and go bong, kick, and then cycle again. Bong, kick, and then cycle again. Again slowly, bong, kick, and then start cycling. And the other side, bong, kick, and then start cycling. All right, to do the Chang Dai Jiang, or low spade palm switch, it would be the same thing from cycling here. If I'm the person in Bong Sao, I would be the one doing the switch. So what I'll do is grab as normal, hit low, and then he would be doing a Gang Da to me, so I have to react by pivoting with Bong. And then I'd be cycling again, here. Once again, if I'm the switcher, I would be grabbing and hitting, then reacting to his Gang Da with a Bong, and then cycling again. Now, if I'm in punch position on the switch count, then I would have to be the one reacting to his switch. So I would just pivot, gang da, and then start cycling again. And again, if I were in punch position, I would pivot with the gang da, and then begin to cycle. So the drill would go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm it, so I have to hit. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Now I'm the puncher, so I would have to gang da. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Switch. Six, two, three, four, five, six. Switch. Five, two, three, four, five. Switch. Four, two, three, four. Switch. Three, two, three. Switch. Two, two. Switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch. Okay, now to add a kick to that same combination, what I would do is come in with the hit kick and then land bong. Again, cycling. Now if I were to add that kick again, I would grab hit kick and then land bong. Once again, slowly from position, grab hit kick, land with the bong so, cycle. Grab hit kick, land with the bong, and then resume cycling.
All right, next I'm going to show the Busell switch against the dummy. Now this one has to be modified slightly because of the inflexible nature of the dummy arms. So where I would normally start the bew from under my arm, I can't because I can't push the dummy arm far enough over. So what I'll do when I'm it on the switch count, I'll pivot, view, pull punch, pull punch. Then I resume cycling again. Once again, from the bong position, I'll pivot, view, pivot, pull punch, pivot, pull punch, and then cycle again. So again, slowly, I pivot, view, pivot, pull punch, pivot, pull punch, and then cycle. Pivot, view, pivot, pull punch, pivot, pull punch. Now, on the defensive side, you know that when you're the puncher on the view switch, then you're the defender. So what I'm going to have to do in order to clear this arm, I'm going to have to actually retract a little bit, which I normally wouldn't do. And I'll shoot my view cell with no pivot. Then again, without pivoting, I'll snap the woo cell right up against the other arm. And then pivot bong without losing contact. Then again, I'll resume cycle. Now once again, if I were in punch position on the crucial count, whereas I wouldn't normally, I'm going to retract slightly, view with no pivot, wu sao with no pivot, and then pivot into bong. Resume cycling. So with a descending count, letting the dummy be the switcher and the switchy, what's going to look like is this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm in bong, so I start it. Pivot bong, pivot pull punch, pivot pull punch. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I have bong, so I have to pivot view, pivot pull punch, pivot pull punch. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm in punch position, so I don't pivot, I don't pivot, I pivot. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't pivot, I don't pivot, and then I do. Six, two, three, four, five, six. Switch, switch, switch. Five, two, three, four, five. Switch, switch, switch. Four, two, three, four. Switch, switch, switch. Three, two, three. Switch, switch, switch. Two, two. Switch, switch, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch, switch, switch. All right, now to add a kick to the bu cell switch, what I would do is, if I was in bowling cell on the crucial count, I would pivot view, then I would pivot pull punch, and then land pull punch, and then resume cycling. Again, I would pivot view, pivot pull punch, pivot pull punch, and then resume cycling. Now, if I were going to do the kick as a stop kick, what I would do is, first of all, view with no pivot. Then, with the stop kick, I would usually woo and kick, then I would land bong, cycle again. Now, once again, as a stop kick, I would be with no footwork, then I would woo kick, and then land bong, and then resume cycling again. So once again, it would be from position, I would view, woo kick, land bong, cycle. Then, if I mid again, view, woo kick, land bong, and then cycle. All right, next is the gum sow switch. Now, when I do the gum sow switch with a partner, as you know, I grab, and then I press the hand that I'm grabbing down. But once again, because of the inflexible nature of the dummy, I can't. So I'll simulate that by touching the lower arm. And keeping that pressed, I'll pivot punch, 
then I'll pivot pull punch and then pivot pull punch. Now I'm cycling again. Now once again, if I have the bong on the crucial count, I grab and simulate the press, keep that, pivot punch, pivot pull punch, pivot pull punch, and then cycle again. Now if I'm the defense, I would be in punch position during the crucial count. So I'll simulate being pressed, fox out with no footwork, loose out with no footwork, and then pivot bong without losing the contact. Then I'll be cycling again. So once again from position, I'll simulate being pressed, shoot up with fox out, wu so, and then pivot long. So with the descending count, it's going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have bong, so I have to switch. Switch, two, three, four. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once again, I'm the switcher. Switch, two, three, four. Then eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Switch, two, three, four. Seven, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Switch, two, three, four. Six, two, three, four, five, six. Switch, two, three, four. Five, two, three, four, five. Switch, two, three, four. Four, two, three, four. Switch, two, three, four. Three, two, three. Switch, two, three, four. Two, two, switch, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Switch, two, three, four. All right, now to add the kick or stop kick to the gum cell switch, what I would do from this position, if I'm starting it, I would grab as normal, press, pivot punch. Then to add the kick, pull punch kick, and then land, grab punch, cycling again. Now again, if I was the one that was going to start, I would grab as normal, press down, pivot punch, pivot pull punch kick, land punch, start cycling. Now again, slowly, I grab as normal, press, pivot punch, pull punch kick, land with the punch, cycle again. And again, I would grab as normal, press down, pivot punch, pull punch kick, and then land with the punch, cycling again. Now if I wanted to add the stop kick instead from the position where I'm in a punch, what I would do is be pressed, box out with no footwork, then wu sao stop kick and land with the bong sticking to the dummy's arm and then cycle again. So once again, if I was in the punch position, be pressed, fox out, wu sao with the stop kick, stick to the arm and land bong, cycle again. Now again slowly, I get pressed, I raise up fox out, I go wu sao with the stop kick, land bong, and then cycle again. And again, I get pressed, raise up, wu with the stop kick, land bong, and then cycle again. All right, now for the pock switch. What I'll do here is, as before, I'm cycling. But instead of grabbing from the inside, as I would normally do, all I'm going to do is pock to the outside and exclude the dummy's arm. Then I'll pivot, pull punch, and then pivot, pull punch. So it cycles. And from position, if I'm in bong, I pock punch with no footwork. I pivot, pull punch pivot, pull punch, 
and cycle again. You notice this one doesn't switch sides. If I wanted to switch sides, I'd have to fawn it over. And I'd be cycling, and once again here, I would cock with no footwork, pivot, pull, punch, pivot, pull, punch, cycle. And again, I would cock with no footwork, pivot, pull, punch, pivot, pull, punch, cycle. And if I wanted to switch, I'd have to fawn it over. Now, to simulate the defense on this, I'd be in the punch position. So what I would have to do is just pivot, view, no pivot, woo, pivot, bong, and then cycle again. Once again, I would pivot, view, no pivot, woo, pivot, bong, and then cycle again. Now, I'd have to fawn it over if I wanted to do the other side. So I'd be cycling. I'd have to pivot, view, no pivot, woo, pivot, bong, and then cycle again. Now, once again, I'd have to pivot, view, no pivot, woo, pivot, bong, and then resume cycling, fawn over. All right, with the descending count, that's going to look like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I have bong, so I have to switch, switch, switch. Nine, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Once again, I have bong, so I switch, switch, switch. Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm in punch position, so I pivot. Seven, two, three, four, five, five, six, seven. Switch, switch, switch. Six, two, three, four, five, six. Switch, switch, switch. Five, two, three, four, five. Switch, switch, switch. Four, two, three, four. Switch, switch, switch. Three, two, three. Switch, switch, switch. Two, two. Switch, switch, switch. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Nine, ten, switch, 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 fine. One, two, three, four, and then I would do the whole drill on the other side. All right, now to insert the kick and the stop kick into the pock switch on the dummy, what I would do if I were the switcher, I would do the regular punch, pull, punch, kick, and then pull, punch, cycle again. Now again, slowly, I would pock, pull, punch, kick, and then land, punch, and then I'd be cycling again. Now, if I wanted to make that the stop kick from the punch position, I would just pivot, view, woo sao and stop kick, and then land with the bong, cycling again. Now, again, slowly, from the punch position, I would pivot, view, woo with the stop kick, and then land bong, cycling again. All right, now another rather unorthodox way of using a wooden dummy, which is just as effective as uh, the lop sow changes, is to practice your chi sow, actually your look sow rolling hands on the dummy. Now, it is possible if you're a little bit creative in the way you use it. Now, what you can do here is place your tan sow against the dummy's arm. And as if your dummy was doing chi sow with you, you'd have the high fook with that little floppy Liberace vibe that I talked about in my last set of videos. Now, what you do then is flip up to bong and clip on with the fooks out, as if you had a partner who was dropping the ton in that position. So then, it'd just be a matter of rolling the dummy's arms up and down and working it that way. Now, if you wanted to switch, just like in regular sticky hands, from the ton position, you could drop out, become fook, and just clip on with your bong. And then you'd be ready to roll on the other side. And again, to switch back, just drop through, clip on with the bone, and now you're rolling again.
All right, now you could start using some of your guo sao attacking combinations while you're practicing qi sao with the dummy. So in other words, from my roll, if I wanted to practice the lan da chao kun combination from bong, I would just pivot, lan and punch, step in, re-trap, and then grab chop. Now I just go back to rolling. Once again, from bong and fuk, I pull punch, step in with the hit, re-trap and chop. And then I'm back into rolling again. All right, sticky hands, that combination is going to look like this here. From the bong, what I'll do is pull, lan da chao kun, step in, pak chan, re-trap chop. So at speed, it's going to look like this. All right, a second attacking combination you could practice on the wooden dummy would be the Ngoi Sin Wai outside facing Tan Da. So I'd be rolling here. Now from the low foot position, my foot cell would become Tan as I use outside facing footwork to bring me out to the Tan Da strike. Then from here, I could just step in slightly with my retrap and then grab chop. Now I go back to the roll. Now once again, slowly from here, what I'm gonna do is from the low foot and the bong position, I'm going to step out inside face, step in and hit, re-trap and chop. And then I'll go back into the roll. And again, from the low foot, tan, cock, grab, chop. All right. The way that looks in sticky hands, from here, the low foot, I step off tan da, pak chan, re-trap, chop. All right. At speed, that's going to look like this. All right, my next attacking combination will be a triple uppercut off the bong sao. So from the rolling position, what I'm going to do is convert my fuk sao hand to a huyin sao as I pivot uppercut, maintaining contact with the dummy's arm. Then I'm going to grab and lan da with the second uppercut. Then I'll step in with the light leg and throw the third uppercut. So once again from the roll, what I'm going to do here is from bong, I'm going to go pivot uppercut, pull uppercut, step uppercut. And again, my footwork goes pivot uppercut, pivot uppercut, step uppercut. All right, in sticky hands, that move's going to look like this here. From the bong, what I'll do is pivot, hearing uppercut, pivot, line, uppercut, step in, gum, uppercut. So at speed, that's going to look like this. All right, another Guo Sao sticky hands combat attack combination you can practice on the dummy will come from the low foot Sao. So as I'm rolling, I'll stop in the low foot position. Now what I'm going to do is convert my low foot to the lower hand of a Lai Sao pulling and kicking attack. Now without putting my foot down, I'm going to go into a knee and finish with the kick. Now again slowly from position, what I'm going to do from my low foot Sao position here I'm going to go into a double grab kick, shadowless knee, kick combination. All right, in sticky hands, that combination is going to look like this. From the low foot, I'll kick, knee, kick, plant trap hit. And at speed, it'll look like this. All right, now these or any of the other Guo Sao techniques shown in my last series of videotapes can be practiced on the dummy just as easily. All right, another thing you can do with your wooden dummy is practice your sticky foot combinations. So the first one I'll show, 
from position, I'm going to grab onto the dummy's arm for balance. And then what I'll do is I'll start from the inside touching position. This would simulate closed inside. And all I'm going to do is just run up to a round kick, jut, shadowless knee, front kick. Once again, from the inside touching position, I'm just going to go round, jut, knee, front kick. Again. All right, another cheek yuck, sticky foot combination from the closed outside relationship this time would be here from position. I'm going to go straight up to the outside or reverse round kick. Moi jet gyuk, outside jerking leg. Then back to tai sut jing gyuk. So from the touching position, again slowly, reverse round kick, jut, knee, and front kick. Back to the touch. Reverse, jut, knee, front kick. And again, all right, a simple exercise you can do to practice your kicking on the dummy would be just to slide the front leg in, go with the front kick. Without putting the foot down, shadowless side kick. Reverse round kick to the low arm, scrape down side kick down the dummy shin, plant down, step slightly to correct your position, pivot through. Slide the front foot in, front kick, shadowless side kick, keep the foot in the air, kick the low arm, scrape down, plant, step, and pivot. So it's kick, kick, kick the arm, scrape, plant, step, and pivot. Slide in, front kick, side kick. Reverse round kick, scraping side, plant, step, pivot. All right, now I want to talk about how the wooden dummy can help you improve your positioning in relation to the center line. Now, in my last tape series, I explained the center line theory in detail. But in a nutshell, what you want to remember when you're practicing on the dummy is that the center line is the connection between the core of the dummy and the core of your body. So it's not really a line at all, but in fact, it's a plane which connects you to the core of the dummy. The center line doesn't care about the surface of your body. In other words, when I pivot, the line doesn't change. And if I didn't walk, and if all I did was walk around in a circle like that, the center line still hasn't changed. It only changes if I move, because it tracks my core. Now, the object in the center line theory is, of course, to get the tip of your defense between the tip of an attack and the center line. So in other words, if this were a punch from the dummy, then my objective would be to get the tip of my defense, which is here, between the tip of the dummy arm and the center line, which is the plane that connects us core to core. So in any position that I do in the wooden dummy form, what I want to do is get between those two points wherever possible. Now, there are some exceptional situations where you can't because of the inflexible nature of the dummy arm. But as long as the intention is there, you're still all right. Now, using the first 10 motions of the wooden dummy form to explain, I'll show how the center line theory relates to the wooden dummy. So when I begin the form, of course, I start here to, to get my correct relationship distance-wise from the dummy. And this here is to make sure that the dummy arms are in place, that they haven't been pushed out or one's in and one's out. This just sort of neatens them up. And I come in, open my stance. Now, in the very first motion of the dummy form, after having put my guard on the center line, which is the connection of my core to the dummy's core, what I'm going to do is what's called biu jong so, thrusting guard. Now, what I've done here, center line-wise, is I've gotten the tip of my defense pyramid, which is in this case, right here on the outside edge of my hand, between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line. And as I explained in the previous dummy tape, uh, there's actually no need to worry about these two arms or the leg, because as long as I'm not touching them, they don't exist. All I'm concerned with when I practice the dummy form is that which I'm in contact with. Now, from here, I have the center line advantage because I've got that positioning. So what I'm gonna do then is pivot 
and strike the dummy on the open center line. My grabbing hand is of course between the tip of the dummy arm and the center line, which is open for my strike. Now what I do next is the grab and sink, which is just a follow-up attack on the same line. Once you have the line, you should continue to attack it. Now I drop through and I do that cross bong so, which is positionally correct because I've got the tip of my defense, which is the bong, between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line, which is between my core and the dummy's core. Now I'm going to move right around the dummy, and if you can't see it on this side, you'll see it on the other side. What I'll do is change the line. Because I'm stepping, the center line is actually tracking my core. So the center line has actually followed me, and it's now here. So in this situation, what I'm doing is getting the tip of my defense pyramid, which is in this case Tan Sao, and it's right there, between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line, which is now open, and I'm striking on the new center line that was created by my stance motion. Now, without changing the line, I'm just going to pivot into Toi Ma, Gang Jam So. Now, the line hasn't changed, you see. From this position to this, my core hasn't changed. The only thing that's happened is my body has pivoted around the core. Now, in this situation, my Jam So on the up, upper arm is touching the dummy's arm. And once again, I'm between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line. My Jam So falls in between those two points. Even though it's very slight, it is there. Now in the same way, my Gang Sao arm is touching the dummy between the tip of his arm and the center line. That means I'm positionally correct. Now when I move into the Ngoi Kwan Sao, again, I've got two pyramids going. I've got my upper pyramid, Tan Sao, the tip of the pyramid being here at the wrist, between the tip of the dummy's pyramid and the center line. And on the low level, I have the tip of my Dai Bong Sao, low wing arm deflection, between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line. So again, I have center line advantage. All right, moving from the Ngoi Kwan Sao, again, I'm going to use the Seat Ma motion intercepting footwork to bring me to the other side of the dummy. Yep. Now, what I've done is created a new center line because, as I said before, the center line follows my core, and it still connects me to the core of the dummy. So what I'm doing here is getting the tip of my Tan Sao defense pyramid between the tip of the attack pyramid, which is here, and the center line, which is now here. I'm also attacking on the low line on the center line which is opened by my new stance motion and my block. Now again, without changing the line, I'm just going to snap and pivot into the Gang Jam Sao, which as I explained on the other side, puts my Jam Sao between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line, as well as the Gang Sao between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line. So I'll be structurally correct. Now when I go for my next motion, what I'm going to do is step and face with Loi Kuan Sao, inside rolling hands block. Now in this case, my Huyn Sao is structurally correct because I've gotten this wrist, which is the tip of the pyramid, between the tip of the dummy's arm and the center line. Now, it is, in a sense, structurally incorrect here with the jam because I haven't been able to get the tip of my pyramid here between the tip of the dummies and the center line. So in this particular instance, the dummy has the center line. But as I mentioned before, the intention is there of actually moving it off the line, but you can't because the dummy's arm won't bend that far over. But if you had the opportunity, you would actually be pushing it across the line. Now, without losing hand contact, I convert to Jet Da Jing Jin. And again here, I have to give up center line because my jet can't actually pull the dummy's arm across center like it would like to. But the intention is there of pulling it, and that's the important thing. Now, of course, the Jing Jiang is all right because it's right on the open center line. Now, I'll turn back to center, double jet, and I've given up the center line on both arms, which again isn't as important because the intention is there. Now when I go into the Pao Jiang, the double lifting palm, what I'm doing now is using the horizontal elbow level center line, which is nothing but taking the whole center line theory and turning it on its side. So rather than concerning myself with the line between my core and the dummy's core, now I'm thinking about the line between my elbow and where the dummy's elbow would be and getting between those two points. All right, that's all for now. So until next time, thank you very much for watching these tapes. I hope you got something out of them, and give me a call and let me know what you thought of them. Thanks a lot.